and welcome to Sectors Up Close. I'm Elena Casas. Today we're focusing on hydrogen, and my guest is Joachim Clement, Head of Strategy at Liberum Capital. Hydrogen is the most common chemical element in the universe, and long before the invention of the Tesla, scientists believed we would all someday drive hydrogen cars. That technology was overtaken by electric batteries, but as countries race to meet net zero emissions targets, it could come into its own. Its supporters say it could heat homes and decarbonise buses, heavy duty vehicles and shipping, for which electric batteries are impractical. The European Union has announced plans to produce 10 million tonnes a year by 2030, saying it could meet 24% of energy demand. But the majority of hydrogen now is produced from fossil fuels. Truly green hydrogen is made from renewable energy and water, but many projects use so-called blue hydrogen, which is made from natural gas using carbon capture and storage technology that leaves some environmental groups sceptical. Well, is the market convinced? This is the Vanek Hydrogen Economy ETF, traded in London, one of a few tracking this space. It's down 26.4% year-to-date. Key companies in here include US fuel cell manufacturer Plug Power, Mitsubishi, hydrogen truck maker Nikola, Bloom Energy, British fuel cell firm Ceres Power and ITM Power, which manufactures electrolyzers that turn water into hydrogen in its Sheffield factory. So, should investors get ready for a hydrogen boom? To find out, I'm now joined by Joachim Clement, Head of Strategy at Liberum Capital. Joachim, hi. Like a lot of growth stocks, these have taken a battering in recent months. So, what makes them any different? Well, unlike so many growth stories that have come under investor scrutiny in the recent months, uh, hydrogen as a theme actually has very, very substantial legs and a bright future. To give you an idea, uh, in order to achieve net zero goals, we need to put ships, trucks, and in particular also airplanes onto hydrogen power because that's the only feasible technology to decarbonize these uh, modes of transportation. And that will require some three trillion US dollars in investments over the next 30 years. But from an environmental perspective, this isn't all necessarily green, is it? A lot of projects are getting hydrogen from sources that still use fossil fuel energy. So how can investors tell them apart? There are in the, uh, differences in the uh, way, for example, fuel cells can be powered. You mentioned Ceres uh, uh, Energy uh, in, the, in your opening. That it, they are producing a fuel cell, for example, that can be uh, run with hydrogen, but that can also be run with natural gas or biofuels, making it much more flexible in order uh, it for, for applications and not necessarily dependent on green hydrogen, which is clearly the only net zero form of uh, energy that we have in this space. You've mentioned Sarah's there already, but do you have any other companies in this space that you recommend? Well, the other company that I really like as a pure play uh, is ITM Power. Uh, ITM Power is uh, an electrolyzer company. They are producing hydrogen to fuel fuel cells, uh, but they're producing it out of water using 100% renewable energy. So they are effectively uh, producing hydrogen without any carbon dioxide emissions in there. So they're uh, probably one of the few pure play green hydrogen producers in this world at the moment. But how much are companies in this space dependent on government subsidies or changes of policy, which may or may not necessarily happen in order to make a profit? Initially, because it's much earlier stage than wind and solar and other forms of renewable energy, uh, government subsidies and government investments are necessary. The good thing is here uh, that not only in the European Union, but also in the US, there's an $8 billion investment uh, by the Biden administration in hydrogen uh, technology, and the states in the US are running to get that money. So the seed money is there. However, uh, a lot of those technologies are already producing revenues not for shipping and airplanes, but as kind of large scale producers of green energy on a stationary basis. And that means they're profitable already now or close to profitability without government subsidies. So this isn't necessarily a very long term play before they might turn a profit from an investor perspective. 
I think it is still a long-term play. In order for mass applications to emerge, we will have to think about the end of this decade. But the niche players that are available and that we talked about, uh, some of them are very close to profitability and will become profitable in the next few years because they have ready-made products that can be rolled out. Thanks so much for that insight, Joachim Clement, Head of Strategy at Liberum Capital. Well, before I go, let's take a look at some of the stories we're following in this space. The EU unveiled a 210 billion euro plan on Wednesday to end its reliance on Russian fossil fuels by 2027 and use the pivot to speed its transition to green energy. The investments include 27 billion euros earmarked for hydrogen infrastructure, alongside 86 billion for renewable energy and 56 billion for energy savings and heat pumps. But it will also mean new investment in natural gas projects to replace the Russian supply, although the Commission said those pipelines could later switch to carrying hydrogen. The advisory firm PIRC has recommended shareholders vote against Shell's climate plan when they meet on Tuesday, saying the company doesn't provide enough clarity on who is accountable for reaching emissions targets, which in any case lack ambition. The oil giant is calculating its targets in terms of carbon intensity, which can allow actual emissions to rise. At last year's AGM, shareholders backed its plans, but 30% voted for much stronger emissions targets. And Tesla was removed from the S&P 500 ESG index on Wednesday. S&P cited the electric vehicle company's lack of a published low-carbon strategy or business conduct codes and claims of racial discrimination. Elon Musk was not amused. He tweeted, quote, ESG is a scam. The metrics used to judge corporate performance on environmental issues are controversial, and S&P's ESG index still includes oil majors such as Exxon. And that's your roundup of the hydrogen space. I'm Elena Casas, and this is Reuters.